Okay, it's 4.2 functions. We're talking about function notation and typical problem looks like this. If you're going to take a function f of x and another function g of x and evaluate them, you typically do a problem like this, f of 2. And that means you stick a 2 into this function right there. And the way I recommend it is you rewrite it with an empty spot where the x was. I just copied this thing exactly except an empty spot right here. Then I drop in a 2. And then I figure out the answer. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 8 would be 2. That's it. Done. Raise your hand if you get that kind. Okay, good. Moving on. This is the same exact thing except I first I figure out f of negative 3. Stick a negative 3 in there. And I have negative 3 parentheses plus 8 and I drop in a negative 3. And I get that answer done and then what I'm going to do to it, I'm going to add 7 to it. Whatever it comes out to be, I'll add 7. So that one's easy. Let's move on. On this kind, the only trick on number 3 is the trusting to see, do you know if you should distribute this g or not? And you should not. Why? Because really, anytime you have parentheses, shouldn't you do what's in the parentheses first? All right, girls, you're not with me. All right. If you're just not distracted, that would be fine. If it, I don't have to really be... If you were here on Wednesday, it's actually okay. Just don't be talking to each other. Okay, 4 minus 2 is first because it's in parentheses. 4 minus 2 is 2. So then this becomes 2, and I just have g of 2 then. And it's that simple. Go stick a 2 into this function right there. The 2 would go right there, and you get the answer. That's easy. Here, I got 2 f of 10 and g of 3. We'll find out the two separate answers, and then add them. Okay? On this kind, how would I start on number 5? Which part gets done first? G of 9. Figure out g of 9. Once you know what that's like 12, then you do negative 3 times 12. We've got to figure out g of 9 first. Go ahead and try that one. Stick in the 9 into that g function. If you want to just do it in your head, that's totally okay. But write the answer down on your iPad and turn it my way when you're done. And keep it there. That will make it painfully obvious if anybody's not showed me their answer yet. I'll know who. So figure out g of 9 and then whatever that comes out to be, multiply it by negative 3. Okay, keep them turned my way. I'm going to set it up so you don't have to hold it. Still waiting for quite a few people. Nope, g of 9, after you've done g of 9, times it by negative 3. Close now. I've only got like three people left. Keep it there. Thank you. No, no, keep it. Thank you. I'm waiting for three people, four people. Do you know what g of nine is yet? Okay, take start by putting the nine into that g function. And that means that x there in the upper right hand corner that turns into a nine. All right. Other than a little negative mistakes here and there, you pretty much had it. If you put a 9 right here, you're going to have negative 18 plus 4 makes negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7. And if I have a negative 7 times a negative 3, I get 21. All right, pretty much everybody had that one, which is awesome. The next one's super easy. We're moving on. This is a graphing kind. The graphing kind are a little more challenging. This is the kind where if you do f of 6, you can say they told you that x is 6. x is that spot. So if they put a 6 there, they said x is 6. Here's where x is 6. I follow this up, boom, it's right there. This would be if they said y was 6, I'd go like that, because that's the y direction. This is where y is 6, right? So I just follow it across. But it's not. It's x is 6. So I follow it up, and there it is. That's the important point. That's the point 6, 2. Which part did they already tell me? The 6. So what part do they want? The 2. The answer is 2. Get how they told you x? Here they're telling you x is 2. You find x is 2. Everybody look for it. Figure out where x is 2. If x is 2, what they're really saying is what is y? If x is 2, what is y? Well, here's x is 2. There it is. What's y? Say it. 2, good. The next one. 3f of 0. A negative 3, f of 0. First, you've got to find f of 0. f of 0 means x is 0. 
they just told me that x is zero. So I'm going to put in a zero for x, and I'm going to say, okay, if this is the x numbers, that's where it's zero, that's the spot, zero comma zero. So if x is zero, what's y equal to? Zero. So this whole thing right there is equal to zero. And what's negative three times zero? Zero. All right, now I'm going to ramp up the difficulty level here. For those of you that were here on Wednesday, this should be starting to get to be more of a challenge now. Instead of saying like f of 2, what if I said f of x is equal to 3? Then I didn't tell you x, did I? What did I tell you? Why? Have you ever noticed that f of x is the same as the y? See, this isn't the y-axis anymore. It's the f of x axis. f of x and y are the same thing. So they pretty much told you that y is 3. If they told you that y is 3, they want to know what x is. So then if y is 3, it's right here. Here's where y is 3. So I follow it across, and there's the answer. Anybody see any problem with that? Ah, there's 2. Follow it across further, there's another answer. And the way I like to write these is this point. This is at 3, 3. And the other spot is at 9, 3. And what they did is they told you that y was 3. What did they want to know? They wanted to know the x's. There's two x's. In this point right here, the x is 3. In this point right here, the x is 9. x is 3, and x is 9. Raise your hand if you would have got that one right. Be honest. Okay. I'm going to give you another one. See if you can handle this one. Actually, I'll use that same picture. I want to know if f of x is 8, what's the answer? f of x is 8, what is x? What's x? Don't say it. Write it down. Zoom in on it. Show it to me. They didn't tell you x is 8. They told you y is 8. All right, pretty much everybody is saying 10. Here's y. Y is 8. See? There's y is 8. Follow it across. What's, what am I supposed to be finding then? The x. So what's the x at this spot? 10. See? So this spot right here is at 10, 8. We already knew the y was 8 part. What we went, wanted to know was what was x? 10. Okay. Now, one more stretch. This is going to start helping if your IQ is above 100. Do you guys know anything about IQ scores? Do you know that IQ is average? Sorry, the, the average IQ is 100. 100 is exactly in the middle. Okay? And since this is an honors class, most of you are probably above 100. Uh, our freaky high IQ would be like 135, 140. Um, there's, there are people that are like 180s, but you probably won't run into them out in the street. All right, so let's say that we have f of x plus 5 is equal to 8. Hmm. First question to ask yourself, I have done it every time. I've said, what did they give you? Did they give you x or did they give you y? Did they give you a clear answer for what x is? No, they did not. If they had, they'd have put a number right here. But they gave me that gobbledygook. They didn't give me a number. So they did not tell me x. Therefore, they must have told me y. They told me y is 8 again. Well, here's y is 8. And then what they we you figure out from that is this point of 10, 8. And so the 10 must be an answer. So how is 10 the answer? That's because f of 10 would be 8. I'm going to scribble out this part and to not let it confuse you. Do you get that f of 10 is 8? Does that part work for you? That's a combo of an x and a y, 10 and 8. This is the x part of it. See? This is the y part of it. Okay. So, if f of 10 is equal to 8, do you get that the x plus 5 has to equal 10? And therefore... What's x got to be? x must be 5. 
because if x is 5, 5 plus 5 makes 10, so x must be 5. x equals 5. I'm going to give you another one like that. Let's find if f... I'm, I'm spending a lot of time on the hard ones right now because the easy ones will be easy for you. You'll get most of them right on the quiz. I want to focus on the ones that are likely to trip you up. All right, so let's talk about this point right there. I'm not talking about this one this time. We're going to ignore that other point over there where it tits. I'm going to say f of x plus 17 is equal to 3. How do you start? You ask yourself, did they tell you x or did they tell you y? What do you think? I told you y. Honestly, my advice on this kind, it's kind of weird advice, but scribble out the middle. Just think and figure out one thing. What's got to be in the scribble? F of what is 3? Then they're telling you y is 3, and so then you've got to figure out the x. What should be right, what number should be right in there? 3. Now, remove the scribble and say, oh, so x plus 17 has to be 3 x plus 17 has to be 3. Subtract 17, x equals negative 14. Raise your hand if you already had that on your iPad. All right, good. Now, one more kind. If we have a chart like this, and this is x, and this is f of x, and this is g of x, and if x is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then f of x is 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. And g of x is minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. What if I asked you, what's f of 4? Look at the chart. Can you find it? Think for a second. You can. What's f of 4? Once again, is it important what they gave you? Yeah. Did they give you x or y? Say it. They give you x. They give you x is what? Find where x is 4. Do you see it? x is 4 right there. So this is the column I'm talking about where x is 4. And then do you think I'm going with the f or the g function? It's got to be f because it tells you f. See right there, f. So they can't be the G, it's got to be the F function, like right there. See where they overlap? What's well, the answer? 16. How many of you knew that it was 16? All right, good. I think these charts are pretty easy to read. So then, what if they don't tell you X? What if they say F of X is 9? And they would want to know what X is. Can you do that? They, gave, they didn't give you X this time. If they gave you, how about this? Give me your answer. Turn it my way. I can see how many of you are with it. All right, lots of you are with it. All right, only one person had it goofed up in their head. Uh, this, if this is, if f of x is 9, then that means this is an important spot right here. And what do we want to know? We want to know x. Follow the x over here, it's 3. x must be 3. Okay. So, here's a, here's a pre-calc kind of question. Actually, it's in calc. They give you the same chart, and they give you a little something a little harder. They say, what's f of g of 2? How do you start a hard problem? that's got multiple layers. Where do you start? Inside. Very good. So if I start on the inside, we just got to really figure out what g of 2 is. What's g of 2? What's g of 2 again? g of 2 is what? Negative 1. So then it's really asking you to figure out what f of negative 1 is. But they don't have it on the chart. Did you ever notice what was happening? 
as you made x into its answer, what's happening each time? So what is f of x really? x squared, very good. And so then f of negative 1 would be negative 1 squared, which would be 1. That's like a calc question. And that was hardcore. How many of you followed that? All right, good. Okay. So your homework for today, I want to actually get you started on it. So everybody find it right now. Uh, I have mine as a PDF worksheet. Oh, shoot, I thought I had it downloaded here. I'm going to pause for a second while I find it. Okay, I found the worksheet. And here's number one. F of three. First question they always ask, I should say you should always ask is did they give you X or did they give you Y? What did they give you on number one? X. They said X is three. So you go find where X is three. Hmm, X is three right there. So then you follow it up. And there's my key point right there, which is what comma what? 3 comma 1. And they already gave me the 3, so what's the answer they're looking for? 1. Okay, number 2. 2f two of 1. Well, first I've got to figure out f of 1 is. Whatever it is, I'm just going to times it by 2. So first figure out f of 1. In f of 1, what they're giving you is that x is 1. Here's where x is 1. I follow it up. There's my spot. It's at 1, 2. And again, I already knew the x part, so it's the y part. The f of 1 is equal to the y part, which is 2. Then I got to times it by 2. So it's 2 times by the other 2, and I get 4. You need to show a little bit of work. Like, number 1, there's no work to show. But number 2, you need to show me that it was 2 times f of 1, which is 2 times 2, and that's why it's 4. Okay, these are super simple. You're just going to subtract two. Find the first one, find the second one. When you found them both, subtract them. Let's do number four. Number four, this one they did not tell you x, so therefore they must have told you y. If y is negative two, negative two is right here, and there's my spot. Oh, wait, that's the wrong spot. That's where x is negative two, sorry. y is negative two. Y is negative 2 down here, and there it is, and that's my key spot, negative 3 comma negative 2. So, if the Y is negative 2, the X is negative 3, so this is negative 3. All right, I hope these feel pretty easy, because we got into the really hard ones and practiced those a lot. So it should make the ones that we're doing right now feel like they're easy peasy. All right, let's move down to problem number nine. Clear the ink. Going down to number nine right there. X when f of x is negative 11. Did they tell you x? Nope, they told you y. Y is negative 11. So I'm going to go in and to the f function, which is right here. Notice I'm not using the g function. I'm going to eradicate it so I don't have to get distracted by it. I'm going to use the f function right here. And they did not tell me to stick in negative 11 for x. You're supposed to stick in the negative 11 for f of x. So that goes right here. That becomes negative 11. Negative 11 equals negative 2x plus 7. You solve that equation. Once you solve it done, you'll have x, and that's what they wanted. They didn't tell you x, they told you y, so you have to put it in for the f of x, which is the y, and then you'll figure out what x has to be, solving this equation right here. All right, I want to give you a bunch of time to work. There's not tons of time left, but what time we do have left is your time to work, and that's all I got for you.